Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed and uh, I've been trying to hatch a plan to do an outside worm bin and I have been collecting um, weedings and stuff like that in this big, um, I think it's a 33 gallon uh, bin. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to flip it and drill some holes in the bottom and uh, in the top so that it can, you know, get rain and stuff. And then uh, I'm going to release some worms that I collected in one of my uh, bait cups. I'll be interested to see if there's actually any worms in here already from just the things that I've put on them, uh, that I've picked up off the ground. So let me grab my drill and we will get to it. Full disclosure, this is my husband's drill. Mine wasn't charged. All right, I'm going to call that enough. Oops. I see a lot of woolly pulleys in here. I did put some uh, sod in here, so I thought maybe there might be some worms already in there from the sod. No. All right, well, there's going to be worms in there now. Let me grab my cup of worms and put this back over here next to the greenhouse. All right, so I just emptied out uh, all of my castings out of my collection tub and Let's, let's dump them out and see what I've got for worms in here. And not a whole lot. Enough to get started on, I think. And I'm willing to bet that the holes in the ground are actually going to um, get volunteers once I start feeding this bin. Um, some stuff that might be more tantalizing for worms. So I'm just going to pour them in there and clean out. Now this is just the regular compost mix of worms, which is the red wigglers, the blue worms, and the uh, European night crawlers. Um, I don't expect the blue worms to make it through the winter, but I think the European night crawlers and the uh, red wigglers should be just fine. Uh, the one thing that I think might be an obstacle to having this be super successful is that um, I don't know how this is going to heat up or, or whatever. I am going to put a lid on it because I do have raccoons and whatnot that are nosy. So I do have my lid here that I'm going to do the same thing to and drill some holes in it. leave that middle part with no holes in it because I'm going to put a heavy brick on it so the raccoons can't get in. Um, so this is just uh, part one of this. So worms go outside and then I'm not planning on moving this. I'm planning on leaving this here year round. So right now I'll give you a close up. That's what's in there right now. And uh, they, it's pretty deep, so hopefully they can deep, dig deep when it gets hot, um, and it'll be cool enough next to the ground. And uh, judging by the amount of roly-polies that were underneath the bin, I'm sure they're going to have a lot of roommates here very quickly since those holes are in there. I think I'm going to also put some holes on the side, get a little cross ventilation in there for them. 
Um, now that I'm looking at it, holes at the bottom, holes at the top might not be enough for the air ventilation. So, these holes are big enough for the worms to escape, but I'm, I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping that more worms decide to come than decide to leave. All right, well, I will do the rest of them um, without you. Uh oh, looks like somebody escaped. Looks like a little baby red wiggler. In you go, buddy. All right, well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.